So this is to show using rigid motions to show angle relationships. The common core standards that are hit in this lesson are grade 8 geometry. So we have some prerequisite knowledge before doing this lesson and the target for the lesson is using informal arguments to establish facts about the angles created when parallel lines are cut by a transversal. So the materials needed are patty paper. Um, if you are not using a document camera, then you may want to use a transparency from the overhead so that you have a, a bigger space to copy on and the students can kind of see what you're doing up at the board. So you're given this figure below. So you have L and K are parallel lines. The, um, you have two angles marked, so A and B. And the first question is show that angle A is congruent to angle B using rigid motions. So first we'll copy this top area and you'll want to brainstorm with your students first, you know, what do you think? How could we, you know, map A to B? What are some of the different transformations we'll need? And so the first method would be to copy your line M and L and your A. And so what we're going to do is we're going to translate L along M. And since L is parallel to K, this translation moves L onto K. So then we know that this angle here was mapped onto this angle here below. And so we'll have to name that angle so we can reference it later. So let's name that D. So since that translation mapped A to D, then we know that A is congruent to D. So then the next thing we need to show is then that we know that D is congruent to B. And so that can be done by a rotation. So you can then trace your line K and your line M. And so we have our D, and we can see that B is up here. And so we can say then that we can rotate 180 degrees about the intersection of K and M, so this point here. And if we rotate it 180 degrees, then we can see that this angle D was mapped to B and the angle B was mapped to D. And because of this mapping, then we know that those two angles are congruent. And so if we know that A is congruent to D and D is congruent to B, then we know that A is congruent to B. Another way that your students might want to look at this is with one rotation. And so if you map by a rotation, you can do this in one transformation. So you have that this was A and this was B. So in this method, we won't need that intermediate step of D. So let's label a couple things just so that it's easier to talk about. So if we say that the intersection of L and M, let's call that P, and the intersection of K and M, let's call that Q, and then the midpoint of PQ, let's call that R. So now if we have these points here, and we rotate this plane 180 degrees about R, okay, so our R stays the same, we're rotating 180 degrees, and so 180 degree rotation makes this, and so R is mapped onto itself, P was mapped to Q, Q was mapped to P, and it also takes line L to K, line K to L, and the last thing that we want to know is then that we know that A was mapped onto B.
and B was mapped onto A. So then rotations preserve angle measure, so angle A is congruent to angle B. So that's another alternative way that students might see um, this through rigid motion. So now part B is asking which other angles made by the intersection of L and M or by the intersection of K and M are congruent to A. So in this part A, we found that angle A was congruent to angle D. Angle A was also congruent to angle B. So the last one that um, we would want to explore is that A is congruent to this angle up here. Let's call it C. And we can say that in two different ways. Angle A is congruent to angle C by vertical angles or by a 180 degree rotation. And so we have this point here, let's call it P. So again, students could trace this and say that if they are rotating 180 degrees about point P, okay, so then if they rotate that 180 degrees, then A is mapped to C and C is mapped to A. And so C is congruent to angle A. So that would be our last result. And so we did all of the acute angles as it is in this figure. Um, so similarly, you can do the others um, and talk about the different relationships that are true when you have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal.